Hey everyone, and welcome to the Dota 2 Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you get started with new heroes in Dota 2. As always, links to all the builds are down in the description, as is a link to my Twitch. Today we're getting started with Troll Warlord Position 1. Hard carry Troll Warlord has been a staple of the Dota 2 meta for some time, and he's seeing a resurgence in the pro meta. The build is a build that is really flexible, so I'll give it some explanation here. Now, first of all, the skill build, right, you want to take, uh, you know, Whirling Axes early so that you can kind of, uh, you know, trade very effectively. Berserker's Rage allows you to do, uh, you know, to kind of trade very effectively as well. Uh, you are going to be taking some Fervor. You do want to kind of have, like, an equal distribution of your skills early. From there, you are taking uh, Battle Trance whenever possible, and your talent build revolves around kind of maximizing Berserker's Rage and taking, uh, you know, either the two talents honestly based on the game situation whirling axis damage lets you farm faster but in this particular build we are going towards battle fury so it isn't quite necessary i'd rather take the fervor attack speed as as is the uh, the damage as well and again battle trance because especially in lower mmr games where this channel kind of like really speaks to most players you know you're gonna have these like long end game engagements where you want to be able to have a battle trance for as long as possible and deal as much damage as you possibly can now, you are taking as much stats and lanes so that you can last it as effectively as possible. You are going to be going into Phase Boot, which gives him some added damage and survivability. Most importantly, you are going to get a Ring of Health ASAP, which builds into your Battle Fury, which lets you farm very effectively. Now, with regards to optional items, something I will note is that Troll Warlord needs Whirling Axes to farm very effectively, especially with neutral camps, pushing waves, stuff like that. And it can be man very mana intensive, so don't be afraid to buy clarities. With that being said, Falcon Blade is something that a lot of high uh, MMR players have been experimenting with because it gives them everything he wants. More health, it gives them mana regeneration, and a ton of extra damage which stacks very well with Fervor uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Berserker's Rage. Regardless of that, um, you know, you generally want to go Yasha into BKB. You're not finishing Sage and Yasha before BKB because this lets you farm faster, but you need the BKB so you're not crowd controlled or basically being, uh, you know, hit by spells during your battle trance because that's not what you want. You don't want to be stunned. You want to be doing damage. With that being said, you finish the Sanjin Yasha immediately after. You get your Basher, which basically is incredible with Berserker's Rage and Satanic, which makes you borderline unkillable. There's a lot of experimentation with Maelstrom as well as a farming item as opposed to going a Battle Fury. Diffusal Blade's great against the Medusas and others where you need to burn a lot of mana. Uh, Scotty makes you borderline unkillable against PAs and others with Evasion, Monkey King Bar. Uh, if you're against another carry that can right-click man fight you very effectively, uh, Butterfly is a great option. And of course, Manta gives you the stats you want and lets you push even more effectively. Because remember, Shore Warlord's win condition is pushing and punishing enemy teams when when you win a team fight. He can, t he can basically end the game within 30 seconds. Right, because he can just take down towers so fast with fervor. So take advantage of Manta style. It's a great item on Troll Warlord as well. Mid Queen of Pain is all about exploding the enemy team as fast as possible, and I'm going to explain with this build how that actually works. She is a tremendous nuker in this game and is back in the mid meta. She's even seeing some experimentation at position four, but more on that maybe in another video. Regardless of that, here's the build. We start with Scream of Pain. The reason for this is because you want to use Scream of Pain to ensure that you get the last hit on the ranged creep. From there, you're taking Shadow Strikes so that you can trade very effectively. A lot of people might not realize this, but you're actually getting a healing per tick now. It was changed rather relatively recently. It's not the old Shadow Strike. It's a new Shadow Strike, and it allows you to sustain very effectively. With that being said, you are taking your value point and blink, and you actually are going to avoid leveling Shadow Strike to maximum because you want to focus on getting as many Scream of Pain uh, levels as you can because you want to farm with Scream of Pain as effectively as you can as well. With that being said, you are rushing a bottle, you're going to uh, double Null Talisman which gives you the spell amplification, the mana amp, uh, the mana uh, regeneration, and a ton of intelligence which helps with your right click and your uh, regeneration as well. You are going from Power Treads into Orchid. Orchid is going to basically do everything you want to. As a Queen of Pain, you want to blink in on somebody, you want to uh, Sonic Wave, Scream of Pain, Shadow Strike, right click them as much as possible, all the while they've been silenced by the Orchid as soon as you blinked in. If they don't die from the burst, they die from the 30% bonus damage that is achieved by the Orchid. It also makes it so that when you Orchid blink on, when you blink Orchid somebody, um, they cannot really retaliate on you, right? And that's kind of the main goal. BKB, because it is incredibly valuable on someone like a Queen of Pain, who's extremely squishy and vulnerable to crowd control. And Shiva's, I know I'm kind of, oh, I was going to say it's going to fall off the screen, but Shiva's gives you the intelligence, it gives you the armor, 
and it allows you to have added survivability so that people can't attack you as quick and if they do they have the armor reduction it gives you the intelligence lets you right click even harder it gives you a blink in kind of um, freezing wave damage effect which is absolutely fantastic it is everything the queen of pain wants one item sorry two items i want to bring special attention to that are kind of unique to queen of pain in a sense that aren't seeing seeing a lot of play right now Mage Slayer. Mage Slayer is inexpensive and it gives Queen of Pain everything she wants. She benefits from every single stat line on the uh, the Mage Slayer. So bear that in mind. It might be a great pick for her against uh, stat uh, sorry magic uh, heavy lineups. The other item is Yule Scepter of Divinity, especially if you're at low MMR. It's great because if you find yourself blinking into a situation that is kind of suspect, after you do your full combo, you can Yule Scepter, and that two and a half seconds is vital because you have a six second cooldown on blink, so basically it gives you an opportunity to blink out right away, which is fantastic. And you can even take the reduction in blink cooldown at level uh, 25, which basically makes you unkillable with a combination of Yule Scepter. In position 3 off lane, Mars continues to be a top pick in the pro and DPC meta. What's interesting about Mars is that he does everything you want an off laner to do. He's tanky, he has incredible initiation capabilities, and he has a very valuable stun, and you can even stun multiple people with his Agnum's Shard. The combination of Blink Dagger into Arena, Spear of Mars, and God's Rebuke does a tremendous amount of damage and can zero, uh, can basically 100 to zero many supports and set up your team for certain victory in high quality team fights. The build for Mars is relatively straightforward in that you take God's Rebuke, two points of Spear in Mars, and then you finish these two early. You take Arena Blood as soon as you can and you try and utilize it to secure a kill. With regards to atomization, you are going to try and get a, hel a Helm of Iron Will as soon as possible. It gives you everything you want to sustain your lane. You're also going to go towards an armlet. Now, an armlet, this particular build is interesting because it gives you some carry potential because you're going with an armlet, which allows you to do a tremendous amount of damage, which goes very well with God's Rebuke. And you're going to be focusing in on God's Rebuke across your uh, talent tree as well. With that being said, you have the double gauntlets of strength. You go into your soul ring because mana is always a suspect issue for Mars and you need mana when, when Arena of, of, of Blood is ready. And to phase blink and BKB because you don't want to be crowd controlled. You want to be doing damage. You benefit from the strength. You benefit from the damage. It's a great item on someone like Mars. If you really want to carry the game, a Desolator is fantastic as well. It works wonders with God's Rebuke and makes you into someone who with this combo, combo can certainly kill almost everybody. Uh, Heaven's Halberd, fantastic item for Mars as well, especially against right click centric uh, enemy lineups. And often, I keep talking about this, Yule Scepter. Yule Scepter is a great setup for the, uh, for the Spear of Mars. You'll someone in the air as they come down, you spear them. Fantastic, right? With that being said, right, you have the usual position three items. Because he's in the mix all the time, Shiva's Guard's a great choice. Lotus is a great choice when you need to uh, dispel. Uh, and you have uh, the Pipe of Insight and Crimson Guard when required. And if you're rich, why not get an overwhelming blink as well? Overall, Mars, a fantastic position three that's seeing a lot of work in the DPC meta. When the DPC comes back, we're always interested in seeing what weird heroes are being played in weird positions. And in pubs, you never see Weaver position 4, and yet here we are watching Pro Dota where Weaver is once again one of the most contested heroes because he can play position 1, he can play position 2, I guess, he can play position 4, he can play position 5. He's basically just not being played as an offlaner. He's being played all over, and this build is all about his ability to be played from the support role. The skills all around, around Sakuchi. Utilizing Sakuchi and Swarm to, uh, to do as much damage as you possibly can and disrupt enemy lineups. In low and more games, people might give you a little bit of heck for picking Weaver 4, but what's tremendous about him is the Swarm is an amazing teamfight ability, and if we know anything about Loma Mar games, people love team fighting, even if it's not even for an objective, they just want to fight because they want to fight, and you have a great uh, you know, skill in the Swarm, which you're going to spec towards as well. The main build, relatively straightforward, you are going uh, right into uh, the, uh, the Spear Vessel, you want Magic Wand as well to help sustain you, the Aghanim Scepter is absolutely vital to help save your carry, and optionally of course, Rod of Eidos is great for him, you can Sakuchi in, uh, do some damage, lock someone down, and uh, you know he really benefits from Solar Crest as well, and so does your team. Overall, Support Weaver can pretty much do anything, that is why you're seeing him picked, he's one of the most flexible heroes in Dota 2 currently. And for our last hero of the day, we have another DPC favorite, and that is Bane. Bane is one of those heroes that if you're at low MR, you almost never see in your games for whatever reason. He is tremendously strong, and he has a tremendous 
presence in the laning stage despite getting a few nerfs and he is being one of the top chosen heroes in Dota 2's DPC. The build for Bane is uh, is a build that revolves around winning the laning stage. You're taking Brain Sap and Nightmare and you are going to be focusing in on getting that Fiend's Grip online as fast as possible. When you have Fiend's Grip, you are setting out to make sure that you dust and kill somebody. It pierces uh, spell immunity. It does pure damage. It is basically a free trade. You take you take uh, Fiend's Grip. You smoke with your position four and three. You go into the enemy jungle and you take down their core. You have to do it every time. Basically, once every minute or minute and a half, whatever, whenever it's off cooldown, you're taking down their position one or two at a minimum. It is just a tremendous, tremendous hero because you're basically trading a position five for a position one or two almost every single time Fiend's Grip is online. And uh, the, the, the item build couldn't be more straightforward. Arcane Boots into Aether Lens into Tranquils. Glimmer Cape because you want that added survivability. He basically has no... I have Glimmer Cape here twice for some reason. Whoops. But anyways, and other optional items as well. If you're having trouble with mana, Ring of Basilius early can be very beneficial. Although in my experience, I find that I can get to the Arcane Boots pretty quickly as well. Because in the laning stage, especially with like a Jog or someone who like... An Ursa, someone that can really fight. You have a kill lane. You have like kill potential as a Bane support. So, you know, lanes tend to go better for you. At the end of the day, though, thank you so much for watching. If, uh, and a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. If you have any questions for me whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comments. And we'll see you in the next Dota 2 video.